folks. Welcome to Sub-Level 3. I'm Connor Alexander. Today I'll be going over Kepler 3042 from Renegade Games. Kepler 3042 is a 2-4 player game. It takes around 2 hours to play. This is a new edition of the game, originally released by Placentia Games in 2016. From what I understand, the only changes to the game have been the art. Uh, the rules are the same. Uh, Kepler 3042, and I'm just going to call it Kepler from here on out, uh, retails for $65. So with that kind of price tag, let's see what you get. There's a large board, 36 planet tiles, 71 cards, four each of technology boards, action boards, and planetary summary charts, some metal tokens, player markers and ships, a pile of resource cubes, and finally a score pad and rule book. I should also note that in the rules, there's a solo variant of the game, which I have not yet tried. In Kepler, all the players start out in our own solar system, and it's a race to get out into deep space and start colonizing other worlds. To do that, you'll need to build ships, develop faster than light travel, increase your understanding of quantum physics, figure out how to terraform planets, and even harness antimatter. This is a big game with big themes, and it really taps into that uh, Carl Sagan-esque wonder. It's epic with a capital E. So let's talk about the basic gameplay. This game is a beast. Kepler 3042 has an ex action selection mechanic at its core. What that means is each turn a player is gonna select one of nine actions from their board and complete that action. Afterwards, they have the chance to perform a couple of optional actions as well as move their ships. I'll cover that more in a little bit. Now, that might seem simple on the surface, but there are two big factors that make this game really complex. First is that most of your nine actions have varying levels of results based on your technology board. For example, if you choose energy storage as your action, the amount of energy you would produce is based on how far you've moved down the tech tree for energy development. The second factor is that this game is only 16 turns long, which means many of the nine choices your action board uh, on your action board may only be utilized once or twice in an entire game, sometimes not at all. This requires you to map your turns out in advance and put some real thought into your planning. But even the best laid plans have a way of crumbling and Kepler doesn't let you get too comfortable. First, at the start of each turn, an event card is revealed, which will resolve at the end of the turn. These are usually minor benefits given to the player lowest on the shared technology or colonization track, and they, end up, they act as sort of a catch-up mechanism. The other unknown is the planets themselves. At the start of the game, the board is seeded with face-down planet tiles orbiting around various stars. There are three range rings, close, medium, and far. Planets uh, that are farther away are worth more points at the end of the game. Uh, because there are five different types of planets in the game, as well as a few other types of tiles, and because each planet has an individual value, as well as resources, it becomes difficult to get too far ahead of yourself. Even once you know what planet you're dealing with, and the tile is face up, another player with a faster ship can beat you to it. Another interesting construct in this game is your limited resource pool. Each player has their own finite amount of little wooden cubes that represent matter, energy, and antimatter. This has two big implications. One, it means you, you can neither hoard resources away from other players, nor can you produce excess. There's also a mechanism in the game that allows you to burn a resource, and that is temporarily remove it from your pool of available resources in order to get some sort of short-term benefit. Regaining that lost resource can be difficult, so burning resources can become brutal quickly. Over the first few turns, you'll find yourself trying to advance your tech tree, build ships, identify planets you want to colonize. The second half of the game is gen generally spent desperately trying to come up with enough resources to terraform planets and advance your technology board to its highest levels where you'll gain huge advantages and score extra points. At game's end, there's a ton of ways to get more points from where you're at on your technology board or the shared colony or tech tracks, um, your hidden objectives, to the planets you've colonized or terraformed. Um, so yeah, I was excited to do this review for Kepler because not many games that take two hours or more to play leave me in a state where I just want to immediately reset everything and play again. 
The game is a maddening little puzzle that pushes you to maximize every single turn. Since there are hidden objective cards for each player, it's impossible to entirely calculate your opponent's score while you play, and instead, you end up sort of scouring your own player and technology boards, trying to squeeze every little single last point out of your resources. By turn 16, you're frantically working to get every victory point you can, wishing you had just one more go around while simultaneously thinking, how can two hours feel so rushed? All of this for me is a positive. I feel engaged with this game. I feel like I need to beat it. Like there might be an objectively correct way to play it and I have to keep going until I find it or die trying. Within that though, is the heart of my criticism. I feel like I'm playing the board and myself most of the time. There's very little player interaction in Kepler 3042. There's no combat, not much, take that. Really, there's just the players occasionally swooping in and stealing planets from others, which is, for some is fine, but in a game with the length and mental intensity of Kepler, it leads to a pretty quiet table. There's chatter to be sure, but by the end of the second, or by the second half of the game, even with player turns lasting five or ten minutes, you're often so busy plotting out your own turn that a definite hush settles in. The game's rules aren't as complex as, say, Anachrony or Eclipse, but the choices each player has to make and the consequences of those choices might possibly make a player prone to analysis paralysis a little lightheaded. I really do enjoy Kepler 3042. It's probably going to be in my collection for some time, as it scratches a very specific itch. In short, it's a brain burner without a ton of player interaction. If that sounds like it's up your alley, I recommend you heading to your nearest friendly local community-oriented game store and giving it a try. One last note. I love that planets in the game that the, the planets in the game are given designations that correspond to real planets that have been discovered beyond our solar system. And in the rule book, the planets are listed out and they give credit to the scientists who discovered them. Those are the kind of touches that I want to see in my board games. That's it for Kepler 3042 and this episode of Sublevel 3. If you like this video, you can find more board game content, including articles and podcasts on my site, Sublevel 3. You can find that at sl3.co. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep playing.